Hi everyone, in this video we are going to focus on the trend in seasonally corrected exponential smoothing method. Before going through an example of this technique, I want to briefly talk about forecasting in general. So in any observed demand we have two components, systematic component and random component. Systematic component may include level, trend and or seasonality. So to detect this, we examine the past data and see if there's any trend and or seasonality. So you basically plot the demand versus period graph and see what kind of behavior your data has. So in our example, suppose that we are operating a cafe at RPI campus and we want to forecast the demand for iced coffee. So the table on the left shows us the demand for iced coffee over 16 weeks. So these are randomly generated fictitious values. So we have the data for 16 weeks and now I want to see what kind of behavior this data set has. So to do that, I go to insert section, find my graph and select this first one and right click and say select data, add and my y axis is going to be my demand values. Say OK and update your x axis is your period or weeks in this case. Say OK and I got my graph. So in this graph, what we observe is there is some fluctuation. So it the demand goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, and so on. So in addition to this seasonality, we also have an increasing trend. So even though these fluctuations occur, we still have some sort of increase if you look at this pattern over here. So this means our systematic component in this case is level plus trend times seasonal factor. So we have level, trend and seasonality in our systematic component. So the question now is, so if you look at this summary here, so the question is what kind of forecasting method can be applied to this? And the answer is Winter's model, which is also known as trend and seasonality corrected exponential smoothing. So you may ask me why not Holtz method? Because that doesn't capture seasonality. So we have the seasonality and winter models captures that. And th for this reason, we are going to use the formulas that will capture winter's model. So I have the screenshots shots of those um, formulas and we are basically going to see how we can apply them. So the first step is to deseasonalize the data that we have. Since it is, the, since it is seasonal and it is not linear, we cannot apply a linear regression model to it. And the reason why we need linear regression is to initialize level and trend values. If you remember Holt's method to find the initial level and trend values, we fit a linear regression model. So we are going to use the same idea, but first we need to deseasonalize our data so that we can apply the linear regression model. So to, to deseasonalize, we have this formula. If P is even, we are going to use this formula. If P is odd, we are going to use this formula. So what is P? P is the number of periods after which the seasonal cycle repeats. So how often my cycle repeats? If you look at these, so 1, 5, 9, 13. So this cycle repeats in every four periods. Therefore, my P value is 4. P is also called seasonality periodicity. So my P value is 4. I'm going to type it over here. So, and since 4 is even, we are going to use this formula over here. So basically, you are going to plug in your t value, whatever period you are going to calculate it for, and p is 4, you are going to plug it in, and your summation, and you have your d and p values. So these highlighted cells are going to be my deseasonalized demand values. I have the first two and last two cells blank because we have four of these in our cycles. So start with d3 so the formula is b3 demand of period 1 plus b7 demand of period 5 
and I'm going to need parentheses at the beginning, plus sum of the ones in between times two, because there's this two over there, close the parentheses, divided by two times p. Okay, since I'm going to drag this down, I need to stabilize my p value, and I put dollar signs in between b and 25 and to the beginning of b. Okay, I calculate my decisionalized demand for period 3. Now I'm going to drag it down and compute all of my decisionalized demand values. To verify why I stopped here, you can check this computation. So B14 and B18. So B18 is the last cell, so this 18, is the last cell that I have a data in. Therefore, I can't go any further and this is where I'm going to stop. You can verify your this in seasonalized demand in this way as well. Okay, so we computed our decisionalized demand and now we are going to fit a linear regression model to it. So to do that, go to data, data analysis, regression, okay, and say your set your y range. So my y range is the decisionalized data, and x range is the period corresponding to that. And output range basically go ahead and select a range. Okay, and okay. So, y range is this is analyzed demand, and x range is the weeks corresponding to that. And now I'm going to say okay and get my linear regression model. Okay, so. I have my solution. So intercept corresponds to my level initialized value and x variable is going to represent my initial trend value. So copy them and paste hereby using transpose. So okay, I find my initial level and trend values. Now I can find my decisionalized demand for each period. So this step is after applying the regression model and this is the formula that I am going to use. So level plus trend times period. So level plus trend times my week. So I have to stabilize these values because I'm going to drag it down and I want them to be constant and be computed are all the seasonalized demand values. The next step is to initialize seasonal factor values. So initial values of these seasonal factors are computed by actual demand divided by estimated demand. So actual demand is in this cell divided by the seasonalized estimated demand. Drag it down, you find your seasonal factors. Next thing, by using these initial values, I'm going to find my actual seasonal factors. So we have a formula over here. So this one is going to be used for the first four of them. And the reason is that we have four of these periods in each cycle. So SI is going to be used, going to be computed by this formula. And you see there is an R value here. R is going to be found by the total number of periods in our time horizon divided by P. So 16 weeks we have divided by P equals four is four. So R is four. You're basically going to plug in your values and find these first four seasonal factors. And to save time, I'm going to go ahead and compute them. So it is basically going to correspond to S1 plus S5 plus this one plus this last one divided by four because R is four. And now easily drag it down and find your all seasonal factor values. Okay, so we got our seasonal factors and now we are ready to compute the rest of them. And to do that, we are going to use the formula over here. So S is updated by a smoothing constant. We are going to divide the demand by level and one minus smoothing constant times S from the initial 
period in this first computation. So, but before going through that, I want to also compute my level values. So level value is going to be my alpha times demand in the corresponding period, the cell divided by S. Okay, close the parentheses, plus one minus my alpha value, close the parentheses, times level from previous period, plus trend from previous period. So I am going to stabilize these constant values so that it stays the same and drag it down. Okay. For trend, I am going to use beta. So beta is in the cell times level from current period. The cell minus level from previous period. Close the parentheses plus one minus beta times trend from previous period. Okay, so again, stabilize these constant, smoothing constant, and then drag it down. Okay. So you see some of these gave me an error. And the reason why is that these values depend on the seasonal factors over here. And since I didn't compute it yet, computed them yet, I got this error. And as soon as I compute them, I'm going to get some values over here. So let's compute S5. So S5 is going to be computed by this. So if you look at this formula, T equals zero, P is four, so this index is five. Okay, S5 is what I am trying to compute. So gamma times D, T plus one. T is zero, which means D1 divided by L1. So I'm going to go to the first period. Plus one minus gamma times S1. So I'm going to use the seasonal factor from first period. Okay, so gamma, put dollar sign to stabilize, times demand divided by level plus one minus beta stabilize it times s from the first period okay computed and now simply drag it down okay i computed all of my seasonal factor values using this formula after the fifth period because my p values four and four plus one we have to go to fifth period to compute these smoothed seasonal factors and since level and trend depends depend on seasonal factor values then as soon as i computed their values i could compute level and trend values as well so i have my seasonal factors level and trend values now it is simple to for forecast my demand. So forecast is level from previous period plus trend from previous period times seasonal factor. So peri period one, level times trend times seasonal factor. Right? Drag it down and you got all of your forecasted values and you may ask me what about period 60 17 sorry so for 17 you are going to use this formula so this is going to give you the forecast for how many periods you are ahead of your last period so this one is computed by you're going to stabilize your last level and trend values okay so go ahead and put a dollar sign in between them and how many periods am I ahead of my last period? One, because I am computing period 17, but my last period is 16. So one period ahead and multiply it by S. So that is going to be this one. Okay, drag it down. The only change you need to do is to update this value. So change it to two because we are two periods ahead. Good, drag it down, update, this, drag it down, 
update this three and change it to four because we are four periods ahead. So another way to verify period 20 is calculated 20 minus 16 four. Good. So I computed my future forecast values as well. So now the last step in my forecasting technique is to compute the error measurements. So error is the difference between the forecast value and actual demand. All right. Nice. So for MSE mean squared error, I'm going to need the square of each error value. So multiply it by itself, drag it down. For M AD, I'm going to need my absolute value of error. So for each cell, compute the absolute value of the error term. And last one is for MAP, mean absolute percentage error, and absolute value divided by demand. Okay, drag it down, and now I'm ready to compute my MSE, MAD, and MAP values. So MSE is basically the average of my error square values. MAD is the average of the absolute error values, and MAPE is the average of these values. So I computed all of my error measurements. Now, since I used randomly generated alpha, beta, and gamma values, now I am going to find the best combination of these values. So what are the best alpha, beta, gamma values? To find it, I am going to use Excel Solver. So go to data, solver, and okay. So choose one of these error measurements. In this case, I'm going to choose MSE. So I want to minimize my MSE value. Objective is to minimize and which are my decision variables. So my decision variables are alpha, beta, and gamma because I'm going to select those values to minimize my MSE value. My constraint is alpha, beta, and gamma must be between zero and one. Therefore, my right hand side is one because these three must be less than or equal to one. Say OK and choose your solving method. My solving method is going to be GRG nonlinear because my objective is nonlinear in this case since it includes the square of the error terms. So solve and you're going to get your solution. Solve or found the solution, all constraints and optimal constraints are satisfied, which is good and say okay. Okay, so Excel solver tells me your best combination of alpha, beta, gamma is given here. And error term is now, MSE is now 1.3. So compare it with the initial values. Let's change them back. Now it is 2.0. So see, as we picked some other alpha, beta, gamma values, we increased our MSE value. But Excel Solver found us the best one that will give us the minimum MSE value. So this is how you find your best alpha, beta, gamma values. So this ends this video. Thanks for watching.